What's going on, Funkers? Happy Monday. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top three most helpful tools to enhance your photo editing skills in Adobe Lightroom. I'm gonna be sharing with you in a live editing video tips and tricks along the way that'll help you implement them immediately into your routine. It's what I call my secret sauce to getting those picture-perfect tones and consistency throughout your entire workflow. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so we are here. I cannot wait to share with you my top three most helpful tools that have helped me tremendously enhance my photo editing skills and the final masterpiece product that I deliver over to my couples when I'm creating with them. Along the way, I'm gonna be sharing with you tips and tricks of what I normally do. Um, there's, no going, there's not going to be any speed ramping of any editing, this is just my workflow on how I edit and process my images. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the presets that I'm currently using are my presets. They are Chiola presets. It's kind of going along the lines of the Crayola kind of logo is what I, I envisioned for my preset pack. And so within the preset pack, I only have four presets. That's all that I use. I don't plan to create any other ones just because the, the more that there is, the more choices you have to get lost into seeing which one is the best one. And that's not what I wanted. It happened to me in the past when I first got into editing photos. And it let me tell you, it was just, it was so hard because I would choose one and then my mouse would hover over another one. And I was like, no, this was it. And so I would waste so much time when it came to trying to decide on a preset. So I promised myself when I create my preset pack, this is going to be it. Just four, you have your warm color, the, the preset, you have your cool one, you have two black and grays that you can alternate and choose between uh, to create the, the feeling that you want with it. And I'll show you right now. So that is the pack that I'm creating. That is honestly like tool number one that has helped me tremendously enhance my photo editing skills in Adobe Lightroom, has sped up my workflow. I mean, they are presets that I have created. So if you are interested in purchasing them, I'm going to be editing solely with them because that's the only thing that you see here within the presets. And I will drop them down in the description below and let's get right into it. Sweet, so this is my beautiful couple that eloped in Malibu, Chloe and Matthew. And with this one, I just love how her tears are just coming down from her face, the beautiful contrast that we have within that tear dropping down. And so this one, immediately when I saw it behind my camera, I was like, I think this is going to be, in, is going to look best in black and white. And so my black and white one that I have is Giselle Grace or Grey Grey. So that one immediately, the minute that I put it, I'm just like, ooh, like this is, this is it. And so what I normally do when I kind of hover over it and mess around with the presets is immediately the first thing that I do is mess with the exposure. Now all of my images, let me reset this. All of my images that you see here, are all for the most part underexposed. That's just the way that I shoot, the way that I was taught, and it's the best way, honestly, to preserve your highlights and every every single information that you have within this. And so the minute that I put on this one, this Giselle Grace one, I am I have my my keyboard modified to the exposure so meaning if I hit plus or minus onto my keyboard I can increase or decrease the exposure on there and so you do that by clicking basically with your mouse let's say if I want to switch that over to contrast I would just click on contrast and then you would get this sign and so then at that point I can adjust my contrast only and you see that moving here by just the by just the plus or minus sign. So I'm gonna hit that back over to exposure, continue editing it. Okay. Love that. And then there's a 
little bit too much green in this photo for that tear drop to to kind of come into play. So I really want that teardrop to just show. And so I always hit the lens correction tool. I always fix that distortion on there. And then mess with this as well. Okay, I like that right here in my green. So in the Giselle Grace one, and most of my, my presets here, if not all of them, have the size all the way up to 50, the amount up to 50, 50, 50, 50. That's something that it's just sometimes I put it onto all of my photos just because I love grain. I deliver every single photo with at least a little bit of grain, if not all the way up to 50, depending on the mood and the emotion that we are going with the photo that we're, we are editing. And so I'm going to reduce it a little bit. By reducing it, this tier will show up a lot more. Okay, so do that. And honestly, even by leaving it by 30 would be good. Perfect. And now usually my crop, whenever I'm cropping, normally I want to get rid of as much information as I can because I want to draw the viewer's eye into the emotion that is happening within that photo. And so one of the other tools that, so you have number one, tool number one is shameless plug of my Chuyola preset. That's the one that's going to, I promise you, enhance your photo editing skills. It's gonna kick it up a notch, I promise you that. So that, that wasn't included in the top three, but I'm throwing that out there. So the other one that I use that will help bring this teardrop a lot more is this little brush right here. And so I'm going to zoom in on there. So here you can change how far you want it to zoom in. Sometimes I have it four by one, um, let's do two by one, that should be enough. And so this brush right here is the adjustment brush. And so by clicking on that, at this point, I can basically you're painting at this point. So I can hit that. You can't see that here, but the minute that you show selected mask overlay, you'll see that in red. Now, I don't want to paint that. So at that point, I can go ahead and hit delete. That will delete that. If for some reason you can't see it, meaning that usually like if you draw or paint with this, you don't see where it's at because you have this off. You basically just hit H on your keyboard. That is basically telling your keyboard to hide what is there. And you can even move that around too. So if I were to select it, you can move that around and adjust however it is that you want to. And then when you hide it down, I just bumped up the exposure. I don't want that, so I'm going to delete that, okay? And so I get my, my brush, and I'm actually going to probably zoom in a lot more just so I can really get that tear there, okay? And I normally always hit H on my keyboard just to hide it, just so I can see exactly what is happening. I'm going to fill, go back and fill in the image, and I'm going to bump up my highlights. See if that does any anything for the image. I see it already coming up. Beautiful. I don't want it to go insanely high to where this doesn't make sense. Because you can tell that it's completely edited. I just want to show it in a more natural way where you see it there, you immediately see it within the, the wrinkles here on the forehead, and then just the emotion, the lips, the eyes, you, you can tell that she's crying. And so by, I think I'm gonna bump up the shadows a little bit. Whites, beautiful. Yep. Beautiful, that's what I'm going to leave it at. Bump up my contrast just a little bit more just so that it shows within that and then maybe up on the highlights a little bit Actually, let's bring them down bring down the blacks just a smidge right there and then what i always do something that i do to every single photo in the lights i never like 
Sometimes when I see my couples print their photos and then they show them to me, if I ever visit them at their home or wherever the case, or they send me a photo, sometimes I've noticed that in the past, they look a little almost dull, like muted. And I hate that. I want the photo to just boom, just like hit like the wall with just like the colors and the lighting, the shadows, and just have all of my whites be white, my blacks be black, the colors just boosted up and amazing and ready to go. So with the lights, I always bump it up to at least 10, sometimes even 15, depending on where we're at or the, the mood of the photo. So for this one, I think I'm gonna leave it at 15. So that way when they print this photo, I know that everything's going to be white. All my whites are gonna be white, blacks are gonna be black, and we are good to go. See, so if I, I'll show you, for example, take that off, you see how it looks more muted. But the minute I put this up to 15, we are good. We are straight to go, that's good. Beautiful, all right, next photo. These are my beautiful queens. Henry and Viet. Now, Henry's also a photographer based out of Seattle, Washington. And honestly, Seattle, Washington is like a second home to me. I love going there. A lot of people think that I live out there because I'm, I'm there so much, but I just love coming back and finding these new hidden places that my couples get a chance to show me and I get a chance to document and create. So honestly, first things first, usually I always crop my photo just to make sure that it's going to be a photo that's going to work, right? Now, I normally do a crop of either four by five, if I'm posting to Instagram, one by one on there just to make sure that nothing else is. I know that that's Instagram's ratio that will show up on the post on your feed. Sometimes I'll do five by seven for my couples and that's basically the only ones I use. If I'm doing something for my website, 16 by nine. Now that we got crops out the way, let's do four by five. Actually, let's go back. Let's do, let's say if we were posting this to Instagram. Yeah. So honestly, the, the Pacific Northwest, the PNW, is what inspired my my blues for my preset pack, my Blutiful on there. Now that is an actual color from um, from Crayola and when I was researching colors it is something that I caught my attention. I was like, this is the color that I'm going to choose and name for the, the blues. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. So you see immediately that the the greens, now if this were what 2018 or so, this would have been like the the final image that I deliver. And for some reason I feel like everyone was desaturating their green to the max. I myself am to blame for that. I would do that to pretty much a lot of my photos and it's something that when I created my preset pack it completely changed the way that I saw color, I felt color, I know that's weird to say but even feeling color um, and just in terms of me feeling color is me like the emotion that I felt when I would look at the photo. So I wanted to make sure that I felt that I was there in that moment, even though I took that photo, I wanted to feel that I was there in that moment, making sure that everything was true to tones. I mean, obviously with editing, things tend to get darker, um, brighter, whatever it is, whatever your style is, but again, just staying true to tone, keeping the skin tones nice and clean and ready to go. Sweet, so with this, let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay. Beautiful. And I'm going to drop in tip number two or tool number two that I normally come in and do. Okay, so my blues, I'm gonna bump up the blues a little bit more. You see how in the mountains in the back, you see them? And I love how they look so layered and there's different hues of blues. So bump that, their suits are navy. I know sometimes uh, some of us tend to struggle with the navy blues because when you edit photos, they sometimes turn black, the suits. And so obviously you wanna stay true to color. So their suits were this deep blue navy. And so I wanted to preserve that. And so, and then his hair, if you look as well too, has some, some blue hits to it. So I wanted to also preserve that as well too. 
Okay, so the second tool is the radio filter. This one is a total game changer for me. It has changed the way that I edit and I can tell you how amazing it is to use this tool. So again, I create this oval effect. I drop it right over my couple or the subject that I want the attention just to grab on me. And sometimes you'll, when you touch this or when you hit it and then you place it over the image, you may run into it being inverted. Now what that means is that whatever is within the oval or the circle or however it is that you do it, it's only going to change what's in there. So you see how if I drop down the exposure, they're changing. That's because it's inverted. So if you click on that, it'll change to whatever's on the outside of that. So I'm going to just reset that, okay? Make sure I'm hovered over it, hit that. Now everything looks a little too bright for me. For me, I love the moody, if, if she moody, grab the booty type of feel. So let's go ahead and drop the exposure down a little bit. And I love that. I love how everything else is coming together. Now I'll probably go into there. I think the highlights on their skin are a little too high for me. So I'm going to drop that even more so. Drop the whites a little bit. Beautiful. I think this is at 15. Let's hit 10. I think that's good. That's perfect. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to bump up my, my greens and my yellows and all that. Sorry, I set that backwards, but you, you get the gist of it. Perfect. That. Beautiful. So now you have the before, the after, before, and the after. So that is the second tool that has helped me tremendously when it comes to creating. It's something that I, oh, I just love using this tool, just because it it would uh, it. I promise you, it's going to apply to this final image that I'm going to show you with the sun being in the back and all that. Okay, but that'll be the last photo. So stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and head over to the next image. Beautiful. So I know a lot of you photograph weddings and a lot of couples want that amazing grand exit shot, whether it's sparklers, bubbles, whatever it is that their venue allows. Now for this case, this venue in particular allowed sparklers to happen. So that is what what we did now you notice here I didn't use a flash that is because I am shooting with Sony and so Sony when it comes to low light it is phenomenal and I love it I it is a total game changer for my work and I would not go back to shooting back with Canon or anything just because of low light in here is just so powerful and I love it so much okay so with this specific preset uh, whenever I think of like sparklers I think of warm tones um, just everything being so warm, right? And so that is why I created my Just Peachy. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you know that I shoot a bunch of butts. People call me the King of Steam or the Butt Guy. And so it was, it, it just had to be me, Just Peachy, because a lot of people associate the peach emoji with a booty. So there's that. So put that on there, bump up the exposure on there. adjust the size on that. Now typically when I shoot higher ISO, my light, um, I typically drop down the size just because even though I do want grain in it, obviously when you bump up the ISO in a low light situation, you're going to get some type of grain in there. And so I just wanted to drop it down so just in case that they print this photo, it's not so grainy to the point where everything just looks so so bad essentially when they put it out and so i'm going to actually drop down the warm going going okay. now a lot of it comes from just playing around what i do too another like helpful tool is I look at the photos. For some reason, my eyes are always drawn to their eyes. I always look at that, what's happening there. Um, another tool that I normally use is also looking at this little navigator. Sometimes 
this, you'll when you come across it on your Lightroom, you'll see it just like this. But I always drop it down just because I have to look at it on a smaller scale to make sure that if I were to step back from it, almost like if you're looking at an art piece in a museum, and you step back, can you see it all and can your eyes read it completely? Um, normally we're editing images at such a large scale, so sometimes we get so flushed with how the tones are coming along and all that, but by stepping back, meaning you're looking at this in smaller scale, if the photo looks good, and that's good to go. And that's just my my tips that I normally stand by, okay? I may drop down the saturation a little bit. Yeah, that's what it was. And then I don't want it to... I can't put the the word to it but if you look at so the clarity word here everything just looks so what what is the term what is it is it hdr is that what it looks where everything looks so like the lines are so fine-tuned and everything that's why immediately when you apply the preset it's at negative 10 and even the texture as well too and so sometimes i even play with it and I drop it down back a little bit more because because if you look over look at sparklers here here there's smoke coming out from obviously the sparklers there's fire and so by scooting it back more look at what happens to the background of it it's almost like a, a an automatic almost like tilt shift blurriness to it so that way your eyes immediately draw to the beautiful couple right here started getting married and I started photographing a lot of their, their weddings and their special moments and so with this one I also um, hit up with just peachy any sparkler exit I'm going to hit with just peachy right we get the these colors right here immediately so I love the colors in the surrounding now I just have to focus on, on them too right so I'm going to have their little two one for me
subject or whatever it is that you're trying to change, pay attention to. The minute your eye starts going all over the place, it's, I want to I wanna say game over, just because you start overthinking things and you need to just stay concentrated with your mind. like this emotion, this moment, this wedding, probably one of my favorite sparkler exits that I've done. Obviously, I want them to be in the middle. There, gorgeous. Now, let me drop in the second tool. Is it the second tool? The third tool. This was the first, this was the second. Now, I'm gonna drop in the third one. The third one being this tool. Let me hover over it so it comes out. It is a graduated filter. It is such an amazing tool because, let me show you. So, you drag that up, it's not showing. I'm gonna hit that. So now you see that, again, if you hit H, it'll pop up. At that point, you can see how far it goes up. You can adjust this to where it's only a certain area of it. Okay, straighten that out. And let me show you what I do to help, what I call beef up this picture on here. So I head over to the sharpness of it. Watch what happens to her feet and this entire area here. See that blurriness? If I go all the way to 100, see that blurriness there? I will probably go at like 50% or so. So look at their feet, right? It adds this blurry emotion, like just blur to it, to where your eyes immediately force you. Oops, I'm so sorry. Your eyes immediately force you just to look here in this emotion here. Right, so if everything else is in that blurriness to it, it's just like you're here. This is where you're living, right here, looking and exactly what you're you're essentially you're like a magician. You're playing the the viewer's eye. You want to make sure you draw it to where you specifically want it to, to the emotion that is happening within the photograph. And so this is the emotion there. We are set to go on this image. And I'm gonna show you how to use a graduated filter along for the rest of the images to again continue to trick your audience not necessarily trick them but just play magician and play with you know how you want them to view the image so we have the before and then after before and then after and i'm actually going to drop down the green i think that was also just a little bit sizing on there Exit. Just got to make sure that that uh, no, let's see here. Okay, yeah, we're gonna leave it right there. I'm actually the clarity. Bump that out. Just so love what it does here. Here, everywhere. beautiful. We are good to go on this one. Let's go to the next one. Actually, you know what? I'm so sorry. Saw that. Had to drop down the ah. Aha. There it is dropping down the temperature and did a quick little side glance to it, a double take and I noticed that the image was too, too yellow for me too popular, I don't want that beautiful so that is the final result for and after gorgeous, let's move on to the next one this one uh -huh. so this is actually shot with flash 
So I know a lot of you ask me what, what to do or how to edit when it comes to Flash and how I shoot that, which I will get into in a more detailed video. But for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and get into choosing the one that comes. Okay, let's go with Gray Gray. I just love this so much. Again, uh, people always have, I named it Gray Gray just because people are like, how do you spell gray? Is it one way or the other? So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna name it just that, Gray Gray. And so that's what I named it and that's what it is. So with any black and gray, again, everything kind of depends on the, the mood and the feel that you want within the photograph, right? And so I noticed that they kind of fall, if I go into my, my crop tool, I'm so sorry, I couldn't figure out the name of it for a second. Um, you notice that they kind of fall more so towards the bottom quadrant versus the top. So you gotta pay, pay attention to that. So let's say, again, Instagram purposes, we're going into that. Beautiful, bring that in. If you were posting this Instagram, straighten that out. Boom, okay, we are good to go on that. Honestly, this is this is good. This is how I'm going to do it. The before and the after on that. Okay. Now again, like I said, moving forward with the graduated filter, bring that up, drop down that sharpness. Sometimes I even go as far as clarity as well, texture a little bit. And then watch this. I'm also going to be doing something that I need you to. I want you to pay attention to this, okay? So by dropping this, and I'm gonna show you right now, you're immediately going to trick your audience to just force the eyes to come straight into this right here, okay? And that's here, the exposure. All right, you see that the bottom of the image being darker? And then even as far as the highlights a little bit, shadows, it just depends on the image. You can kind of get away with a little bit blacks as well too. So look at it before and then after. Before, after. So immediately, again, we look at things from, if we look at it from the top, we look at it from light to dark, right? Had this image be completely dark up here and light right here, your eyes are immediately, immediately going to draw to here. But we want to draw it to this horizon line right here. And so that's why making this darker here and if you look look at it here in this area too and that's what I'm looking at right now too I'm not looking at this big image here I'm looking at it here you can see that you can see how dropping it up higher your eyes immediately draw to the face right there boom magic next one same thing okay I think I'm gonna hit this one up as well with the great great if not yourself grace okay or actually probably just peachy anytime i see any warmth in the photo i know that i want to do either just peachy if i see more blue tones in there beautiful beautiful okay i'm gonna crop this up that's always the first thing that i do get all the the unnecessary things in the photograph crop that in that's the little line right there beautiful okay let's see let's hover over my presets look like when I'm using flash. Immediately I can see there's way too much grain in there for my liking at the moment for this photograph. So I'm going to, again, the size will just um, create such, uh, obviously a bigger size in there so that when you drop it down, like I said, I still add grain. I'm pushing this one farther back just so they're fine tuning your really small. Uh, with tattoos, anytime I see tattoos, especially color tattoos, I always kick up the vibrance a little bit, just so the color and the tattoos show up a little bit more. And then jump the temperature just a little bit. Probably add some more magentas in there. Get a bit of contrast. Thank you. 
delivered the image we are good to go. Um, I did see a little spot in here. And I, that is me using this tool here. The spot right here. See a little blemishes here. Now when it comes to moles and stuff, that I'll just automatically leave there. Any blemishes I will take off. Just for the sake of images. Moles I leave there just because moles are for the most part permanent. Most people don't get moles removed, they just kind of live with them, they're good to go. Um, but when it comes to more blemishes, obviously blemishes go away. So I want to take my time and be courteous to my couples because obviously they are paying for the picture perfect that they want. Um, that one I may leave there just because it falls into a tattoo. See if we can play with it without messing up the tattoo. Let's see, it kind of gets into there. Let's go into here. So, this is basically all that I do. I don't do any photoshopping, any crazy stuff like that. Uh, where I spend the most time is color grading the images, making sure that they are perfect, um, and or setting up the scene how I want it to look like when it comes to creating with my couples. Just because I I, if I see something that I can move easily, I will move it and be done with that. Uh, I, I would, I don't want to have to work twice as much when I could have just moved something out of the way easily, if that makes sense. Okay, perfect. We are all set with that. Actually, I'm going to mess with the hues. Their skin tones are more on the olive side. gone step by step and now I'm just speeding up the process just a little bit to move this video along you can see that everything is essentially the same don't there's no craziness to it other than making sure that you have the perfect composition that you are looking for when you are photographing your couples or your subjects and creating with them that's all it takes Practicing like a mother, like a mother funker. Okay, beautiful. See how quick that. we love is just being able to 
sorry guys. So I shoot with the Canon 24 millimeter. I know I shoot with, uh, still with Canon lenses and the hybrid shooter just because I, I didn't make the investment into getting, switching over to Sony lenses just because I already have so many lenses for, for my Canon that when I made the switch over to Sony, I didn't want to make another investment of getting other lenses. So I just bought an adapter and used that. So again, with blues, I exaggerate my blues a little bit on there. Let's create that beautiful there. And then sometimes, even though when I'm using the, the radial filter here, I actually invert it as well too. So sometimes there'll be multiple layers on here. Just so for this one, I'm gonna warm up their skin just a little bit, right? Maybe even bump up a highlight just a little bit. And then I'll go back in there, add a new one, layer it on top, and then I drop my exposure down a little bit. Again, I'm looking at this image over here. I think it drops it down by tens. That's a little too much. You can actually go in there and manipulate it a little bit so it's a five good right in the middle i love that i'll even go in add my video perfect that's how i'm going to keep it before and the after um, i see their skin tones actually now that i'm looking at it that way i see them a little too on the like greenish side so i'm going to add a little hint of helps bring up that hair too. Let's warm it up a little bit more. And we are good to go. Beautiful. So again, before, after, before, after. Gorgeous. So one thing I, I also want to touch on as well is my presets and the way that I made them, I made them with the intention of you being able to manipulate and come up with your own color palette. So you see the difference between this one being so blue compared to this one being so orange, there's more greens in there, etc., more reds and everything. And so with my presets, it's why I only created four, a warm, a cool, and two black and gray ones. And the reason why I made that is because I want you to essentially create your own color palette within the environment that you're in because we are all from different places of the world we all photograph all kinds of people so it just depends i mean everyone's skin tones are completely different some people have more of a red magenta tone to their skin others have more of an olive tone to them more on the yellow side a greenish side so you want to make sure that you Again, stay true to tone, but still being able to manipulate the colors a little bit to where you enhance the image. Again, it's enhancing, not just completely uh, butchering the image. It's for you to enhance it and come up with your own color grade when it comes to that. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there um, and let's move forward. So this is my rooftop shoot. This is actually my first shoot out of quarantine. Now that I can do outdoor photography, I isolated this, these two beautiful queens on top of the roof so that way I can shoot around and have them still isolated and staying six feet apart and so I love the sunset here I'm gonna show you what I do to help bring that out okay so I'm gonna put that with just peachy bring that in there and start messing with the tones there just edit it there's nothing too crazy that I do that's different from the other ones that I've showed you but again I just wanted to Bring that. Okay, bring that out. Let's crop this for Instagram instead. Cutting feet out again. You want to make sure you pay attention to limbs. Make sure you're not cutting any feet off or anything. If you do, um, just make sure that the crop is to your liking and again, not too noticeable to where you just chop off foot again my rule of thumb usually is like you chop off right at the shin kind of thing never at like the toe line because then that just looks funky there so i watch out for everything when i am editing in my in my funk palace okay and 
So with the roof here, when I noticed when I was editing it, um, it's gray. So sometimes, well, again, with adding this, um, this specific preset, the Just PG one, um, and even although I played around with this one, see how the, the roof trench is blue. Um, here it turns it more of like a, I can't put my tongue to the color of it. But again, I'm, now I'm looking at the roof, changing the, the tones of the roof right now. I think I like it right there. So the skin tones are still good. I may come in here, invert it, just warm up their skin just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to get that. And again, I don't want the, the viewer to look down here, even though they may look at it. But again, the first impression matters the most. So if you want someone to stay away from that specific area, mess with it. Trick their eye. Right? It's a little too dark now. Let's go ahead and go to minus there. Beautiful. So again, the first thing that you'll see is boom here, and then you start looking at the overall image. Now again, going back to the sunset that was hitting that mountain right there, I really wanted to show it, but even though I cropped it out, again, using the first tool that I taught you, your painting. Again, my presets, the way that I market them and use them is color outside the line. So literally, I imagine myself painting and coloring my images. And this is exactly what I do to help enhance the image. that I may have missed. Just kind of seeing. Okay. Now I made a conscious decision not to edit these out. Um, again, just because I don't do crazy editing when it comes to like, you know, doing all this crazy stuff with it. Um, you know, I they're on the roof, so it's like, you know, they're, they're up there, they're in that moment and experiencing this, this all together. So here I go to my erase. If you don't want anything when you're painting, you can just hit that with the erase. So I think I'm gonna stop it right here in this little area. And then I might actually go into, oops, I think it froze on me. There you go. Oh, no, 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 I don't know what happened there. Oops, let's go back. Just not sure what happened there. Okay, go back to painting. Now this is kind of left a little more on the gray side. So this is a new one, right? So again, if I hit H, you see the one that I painted at first and this is the second one. So I'm actually going to bring this one down. So it's almost like it's competing with those two. So then it stops at the tree line so that way you don't get so confused so you can see it. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I've gone a little too overboard with it. Just enough to where, like the sun is barely about to touch this here when I take that photo. The erase, I noticed some um, hit the roof right there. Good, sweet. I might actually go in here, up my saturation just a little bit. Show them all that orange. I don't know what happened with this right there. That's the the line of yeah. I know that's the line of the telephone pole and that, but I just want to paint that over again. See, so guys, you can see that you take your time with your photos because quality over quantity is going to outbeat that tenfold. I promise you that. Beautiful. So we are good to go with that before and the after. Now let's go head over to the last image. So this is the most recent post that I just did. And this was the proposal, surprise proposal at Dead Horse Point. Um, so you can see here, my, my backpack is there. 
Um, I actually had to keep my backpack there because the ring was in there. It was in a box. You can see the box here, ready to go. And yeah, I, I, I was so in the moment that I forgot to take my backpack off, but uh, I, it ended up working out and absolutely love this session. So again, even if I go to one by one session, you I mean crop, you can't see this. So I can even mess with that a little bit. Or even when I even delivered this over to my couple, I delivered it, I believe it was a 16 by nine, which I'll edit, I'll edit this in this because the back, backdrop is phenomenal. Okay, I'm using Just Peachy with this one. Okay, and you see that the sun is already coming out from this angle and it's hitting all of these rocks. Now, before we even got to this position, this spot, it was raining, it was gloomy, and I was just like, man, like this, I love it, but we just weren't ready to be in this moment, in this position, ready to propose. So had I waited 10 minutes or so, even more, um, we would have lost our window for her to propose to Ash. And it was just perfect, the lighting was good. The only thing is that I wanted this to be darker, so that way the, your attention is drawn to that. So I'm gonna bring down my exposure. You can see that already looks a lot better. And then we'll, we'll move my backpack out in a little bit. So again, highlight that, okay? And bring that down just a little bit more. Probably like right there. And sometimes you'll run into the problem of, obviously like this right here, part of the background of the rocks area, with whatever is in within this area, is not going to get painted essentially or affected. If I switch over to inverted, obviously that you can see where it lands, where it does get affected on here. So sometimes it, it can look a little funky if, you know, you obviously want them to look, you know, perfect, you know, exposed and all that stuff, but you don't want it to look like there's just a specific like oval there. So what I n normally do is I'll get this, I'll paint over this a little bit, Paint the middle just a little bit, the background a little bit, and then I'll go down to hitting that just a little bit, highlights, and then I'm good to go. I don't do too much to it, but just leave it, and then that, beautiful. Drop that down. Again, all the attention I want drawn to my beautiful couple. There, gorgeous. Now let's get rid of my backpack. See that? It's already gone. Beautiful. <laughs> That's good. Sometimes it's a it's a hassle to get things out of images, but for the most part, it's good to go. I don't think anyone will ever notice other than you guys looking at this photo that it it was there. <laughs> and then I'm going to bump up colors a little bit just to really enhance the what what I were when I was there everything just looked so orange and red and it was just like what is happening to okay and we are good so again the before and then the after it's good now I do see in the before there's more of like the magentas hitting there and there's obviously more green here so I'll just head over to here and I'll just so it brings that in just a smidge. Beautiful. We are all set. Guys, these are the top three tools that I use. Top four if we're throwing in my Chula presets. I'm gonna show you guys where you can find that right now. If you head over to four creatives on the tab, you'll see Chula presets here. Click on that, it'll automatically take you to the preset page. The Chula color outside the lines. Come in there. A portion of all of the preset cells go to Children's Hospital LA. Um, you can go ahead and listen to it right here as to why I donate a portion to the preset cell over to Children's Hospital LA. It means so much to me. Um, a lot of you may not be familiar with why Giselle Grace, the name that I named it that for that specific preset of what that means to me. But if you listen to this, I promise you, you'll you'll know everything about it as to why I do this.
okay you'll see a little editing video a quick little time lapse of that and if you hover this little crayon over you'll see the images changing right we edited this one we saw how this one looked as well too and then this one in Hawaii we have gray gray beautiful and we have Giselle Grace and this one we also edited as well too all right and now you just hit it there and you are all set to go so there you have it Funkers thank you so much for tuning into this week's video if you found the video helpful please hit that subscribe button funk up that like button let's chat in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next video Cheers!